Hey there everybody and um, welcome back to um, some more physics uh, review as we ramp up for our year. Um, in this video we're just going to take a quick review, quick look at um, algebra and trig. And so if you look at our first problem here, um, we've got a situation where we've got a formula f equals ma and we're asked to solve for a. So you might recall that if I have a formula and I'm asked to solve for one of the variables, what they want is they want me to rewrite this formula so that um, a is on one side of the equation, just everything else is on the other side. I'm isolating the variable A. And the way we do that is we just look at what else is on the same side of uh, the equation as A, and we just do the opposite to that variable of what it's currently doing. So, so for example, um, F equals MA. Um, M is being multiplied by A, and the opposite of multiplying is dividing, so I'm going to divide both sides by M. Now, m divided by m is just 1, so that effectively cancels out of this side of the equation. And what I'm left with is an equation that says a is equal to f over m. You'll notice that I've just swapped the position of a, so I've flipped my equation around, and I can do that when I just, if, as long as I switch both sides. Um, in this case, I've got, I'm solving for t, so I've got uh, v is equal to d over t. Now, it's tempting here to solve for t. It's tempting to try and move d first. The problem with that is, if I move d first, then t is on the bottom of that rational. It's on the bottom of the, the fraction, and that's no good. So what I'm going to do first, I need t to be on the top, and so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to multiply both sides by t. And what happens here is t is going to cancel out on the right side of the equation, and now I've got t times v equals d. And now all I need to do is I need to move v. And so I move v by dividing v from both sides. v now cancels out. And I'm left with t is equal to d over v. All right, let's look at the next one. So um, e equals mc squared. And I'm going to solve for c. So e equals mc squared. Now, if I want to solve for c, I've kind of got two issues all of a sudden. The first two examples only had kind of one other variable I was worried about. But right now, I need to worry about this m, but I also have to worry about this squared. And I'm not quite sure which one I should do first. And this is the point in time where I want to introduce you to your new best friend. Your new best friend in the whole world is Sam Deb. Now you might not think you know Sam Deb, but Sam Deb is nothing more than the evil twin, or maybe the good twin, I don't know, of bed mass. So you remember bed mass being the order of operations you go through when you're trying to multiply and add and divide and subtract numbers. Well, when we do algebra, we're just going to go in the reverse order. So if I have anything that's subtracted or added to my number, that thing gets moved first. If I have anything that's multiplied or divided, that thing gets moved second. And then I do exponents, and then I worry about my brackets. And I go through that um, reverse order of operations. So in this case right here, I've got equals mc squared. I need to move the m. I need to get rid of the squared. I'm going to move the m first because it comes up earlier in my SAMDEB. So I'm going to divide both sides by m. m divided by m, as we've seen, gives us uh, just 1, so that's fine. Now I'm going to rewrite this, and again, I'm going to rewrite it so that c is on the left. I'm going to flip the whole thing around because that's easier for me to, to understand there. c squared is equal to e divided by m. Now to get rid of this exponent, the opposite of squaring something is taking the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of this and notice that I need to take the square root of the whole side of uh, the other side of the equation. So not just the e on top, but the whole um, fraction, the, the whole rational. So I end up with c is equal to the square root of e over m. All right, last but not least, I'm going to solve for, the, uh, for d in the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2ad. So v squared equals u squared plus 2ad. There's a whole bunch of things going on here I need to worry about. There's the u squared, there's the 2, and there's the a. But if I follow my SAMDEB rules, the first thing I'm going to worry about is anything that's added or subtracted to the variable I'm interested in. So that's actually going to be this u squared. Now notice that I don't need to do anything about the exponent on the u, because I don't care about u, I just want it gone, so I'm just going to subtract u squared from both sides of the equation. And now this is cancelled out, 
and I have v squared minus u squared equals 2ad. Now same thing, I'm trying to isolate d, I want to get rid of the 2 and I want to get rid of the a. I can move them separately or I can move them all together. They're both being multiplied by d, so I'm just going to divide by 2a. And I can divide the whole side of the equation over here by 2a. This means my 2 cancels out and my a cancels out. And I'm just running out of space here, but I'm just going to write it here. So d is just going to be equal to v squared minus u squared over 2a. And we're done. Now, of course, eventually in physics, we're going to have numbers. We're going to be actually working with measurements. We're going to take things we're going to calculate. And so um, we're going to have to actually calculate answers. Um, the way we're going to do that, whenever we have to do a solution, is we're always going to solve the equation algebraically first, which means we're going to work with the letters for as long as we can, and then we put the numbers in at the very, very end. And that's just going to save us a lot of trouble down the road. It's going to make things simpler, okay? So my equation is V equals D over T. I need to solve for D. So I'm going to do that first algebraically. I know there's some numbers there tantalizing, but I'm not going to put them in. I'm just going to multiply both sides of this equation by t, and my t cancels out here, and I've got d is equal to v times t. Now it's solved for d. Now's the point where I can say, okay, now I'm going to put in my variables. And so v is 36, and t is 8.0. So now I can get out my calculator and I can punch it in. 36 times 8.0 gives me 288. Now you'll notice that I didn't put my units in, um, in my calculation. But it might help to remember that this here was actually in meters per second and this was in seconds. Meters per second times seconds, the, the seconds are going to cancel out and the units I'm going to be left with are meters. You probably also know at this point that D usually stands for distance or something called displacement. And so it makes sense that the measurement is in meters. Um, the next one here, F equals MA, we're going to solve for M. So F equals MA. I need to solve for M. So I'm going to divide both sides by A, divide by A. That cancels out. And so M is going to equal F divided by A. Now that I've isolated my variable, now I can plug this in, and so I get 150 divided by 2.50. And so putting that on my calculator, 150 divided by 2.5, I get 60. Now, of course, every answer, just about every answer in physics is going to have some sort of unit attached to it. So I can't just leave it as 60. Eventually, you might know what M stands for. You might know already. But you can also look back and see that this was in newtons, and this was in meters per second squared. And so we could leave it in newtons per meter per second squared. Now that's a really ugly unit. And what you're going to learn later on is that a newton per meter per second squared is actually just a kilogram. And so we'll leave it in kilograms. Okay, now let's take a look at... Um, trigonometry. So ho again, hopefully this is, um, this is re a review of what you've learned in previous years. Uh, we're going to mostly work with right angle triangles in physics 11. So there's really just two main sets of tools we're going to use for that. And that's Pythagorean theorem and then our trig ratios. So Pythagorean theorem, just a reminder that if I have any right angle triangle and I assign two sides A and B, the hypotenuse C is the longest side. It's the side that's opposite from the um, right angle. And C will be the longest side. And not only that, but C squared will always equal A squared plus B squared. Um, in addition to that, if I have a right angle triangle, for any right angle triangle, for any angle in that triangle, I can talk about the trig ratios. And you might remember the trig ratios as so ka toa. Um, and of course, what that really means is that um, the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And um, the cosine of that same angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent.
Okay, so let's put that into practice here. We've got a triangle and we need to uh, we need to solve the following triangle. So what that means is we need to find all the missing angles, all the missing sides. Well, the first one's pretty straightforward because you can see here, if this is a 30 degree angle and that's a 90 degree angle, I also know that all of the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So 180 minus 90 minus 30 means this has to be 60 degrees. So I've got my first angle. But how might I find my other sides? Well, let's say I want to find this side over here, which I'll just label them, uh, let's say, A and B, just for argument's sake. I can see that since I know this angle right here is 30 degrees, and A is opposite that angle, and I know the hypotenuse, that I can use sine. So the sine of an angle, 30 degrees, is going to equal A, the opposite side, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 12. I can now solve this for A. So multiplying 12 by both sides, I end up with A is equal to 12 times the sine of 30 degrees. When I put that in my calculator, just one thing you want to make sure of, um, a lot of times calculators default to something called radian mode. You don't worry about radian modes until next year when you'll get introduced to them and fall in love instantly. But for now, we're going to stick to degree mode. So make sure your calculator is in degree mode. If I punch in 12 times the sine of 30, my calculator tells me that that is going to be 6. Now, of course, it's in meters, so I call it 6 meters. I now know my side A, I know my side B, so I could use either Pythagoras or um, I could use cosine. It's up to you. I might just use cosine because I like it. So cosine of 30 degrees is going to equal B over the hypotenuse, which is 12 which means multiply both sides by 12, B is equal to 12 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And when I punch that in my calculator, 12 cosine 30, I end up with, well, a big long string of numbers here, 10 point, it goes on and on and on. I'm gonna round it off right now to the first decimal place. We'll learn later where you're supposed to round it off to, but I'm gonna call it 10.4 meters. Now, another really good habit to get into whenever you do any sort of solution in physics is to check it and see if it makes any sense. If the hypotenuse is 12, I know no other side can be bigger than that, so that makes sense. And if I look at this picture, I can see that A should definitely be smaller than B, and that works out too, okay? So that's it for algebra and trig.